Biography of Luang Phor Ka Sam, one of the most respected monks in the kingdom. Luang Phor Ka Sam was born in November 28, 1912. A monk exceptionally dedicated to Vipassana Kamatana, Buddhist Insight Meditation. He became a novice monk in 1925 and was ordained as a monk at Wat Bunyan at the age of 21 in 1933. Luang Phor Ka Sam was skinny and with light skin in his youth. He somehow seemed strong and enduring, despite his thinness and small stature. He was a very considered and extremely clever boy. He was a naughty little boy, but in his mind, he had a lot of curiosity and wanted to know everything, which had become a great master in the Lana period. Whose action is so strong, pure, and great that few other masters can compare to his level. Before Luang Phor Ka Sam was born, a great master Kruba Sri Vishai predicted that a meritorious one would be birth in Lampong. Sometime after, Kruba Sri Vishai passed away, and one of his last wishes was to give this prediction to the people of Lampong to keep in their memory and await the arrival of the meritorious one's birth. Luang Phor Ka Sam is considered an arahant in Lampong. His birth was predicted by the Kruba Sri Vishai, naming him as the meritorious one. And his legend is one of great renunciation and purity. He attained the final stage of meditation through the principle of contentment and mental control over the body. When entering school age, he attended a primary school in Lampong till 1923, and finished his fifth year of schooling. In those days, there was no other upper secondary school. At that time, he was 11 years old. After finishing primary school, he did not continue his studies and stayed home for two years. In 1925 at 13, he became a novice monk, he only stayed for one week and then underwent disrobed. Then, two years later, in 1927, he once again continued as a novice monk at Wat Bunyan in Lampong. And at 21 years old, in 1933, he was ordained at Wat Bunyan and named Kamako. From there, he began training at the temple, practicing and studying the Vinaya, Buddhist canon. Luang Phor Ka Sam was the kind of person who never did anything half-heartedly, he always took his undertaking seriously and gave full effort in what he did. He studied very diligently until 1931. He majored in Dhamma studies and was ordained as a fully developed monk in the Buddha practice in 1932. He was fully ordained as a monk at the Padashama of Wat Banyan. His ordaining officer was Tan Jiao Kun Pratama Jin Danayok. Luang Por Fei, the abbot of Wat Bun Wan Waiharn, was also the municipal district's lead monk. And Pratama Jin Danayok gave him the Haya, monk name, of K Mako, which means he who is perfect Dhamma. As a Buddhist monk, Luang Phor Ka Sam began his ordination period with the study of Pali, one of the which had taught at Wat Sri Lam, a temple with various accomplished teachers of Pali. He studied additionally at Wat Bunyawat Wiharn under the teachership of Pra Mahamua Pram Wangs and Pra Maha He also continued his Dhamma studies with other great masters of Lampong and other provinces. Luang Phor Ka Sam passed his master's degree in 1936. As to Pali studies, Luang Phor could easily read, write and translate Maghata Pali and Thai, the high form of Pali used by the Buddhist monk to write and speak the Dhamma. Luang Phor Ka Sam refused to take the exams to get his degree, which led all his teachers to consent that Luang Phor Ka Sam did not seek any honor or status. He pursued further studies with Kruba Gang, who he had heard was a great practitioner and teacher of the Vipassana Kamatana practice method. Kruba Gain was a Vipassana orientated monk of the Phadong tradition, wandering constantly through the province. He believed that the forest was the place to practice. Apart from his fame as a dedicated practitioner of Vipassana, he was also an expert in the teaching of Vinaya. So Luang Phor Ka Sam offered himself as a disciple and explained his reasons for practicing Vipassana. When Kruba Gain saw the dedication and genuine wish of Luang Phor Ka Sam to practice and develop Vipassana and thus accepted him as a student. He then took Luang Phor Ka Sam to Thadong and showed him the practice techniques in the deep forest. Kruba Gain was, therefore, the first teacher to teach Vipassana to Luang Phor Ka Sam. His eating was done in one meal a day, mixing sweet and salty foods all together at the same time into the alms bowl. Food was not eaten in group sharing, each monk mixed it all in his bowl and ate once a day before midday. In the afternoons, 
they practiced walking meditation, one paced between a marked out area to still the mind and observe the Dhamma. Luang Fu continued his Thudong practice every year until the abbot of Wat Bunyan died. The position was left empty the committee had to elect a new abbot with the right ability to run the temple. They all decided to appoint Luang Fu Ka Sain because he had the honorable aspect worthy of an abbot and would bring a good reputation to the temple. Luang Fu Ka Sain was told of his being appointed abbot of Wat Bunyan, to which he displayed neither joy nor dissatisfaction but took it seemingly neutrally. However, once he selected the position of abbot, he was very diligent in developing the place and knew what things were necessary to improve and build upon. So Luang Fu Ka Sain set to work on improving the temple. Luang Fu remained as abbot of Wat Bunyan until 1949 when he decided to relinquish the position of abbot of Wat Bunyan. He did the official paperwork renouncing the status with Tan Zhao Kun In, the senior member of Lampong. But he was told to remain as abbot for another six years first until the committee of the whole province approved the resignation. His farewell to being the abbot of Wat Bunyan is strange, as the rainy season of 1949 approaches, this day is also his last day remaining in the temple. Luang Fu Ka Sain fled. Nobody noticed him leaving the temple grounds at all. As the morning came on the first day of the Kao Pansa celebrations, and hordes of devotees began appearing with offerings in the Vihara shrine room to give alms to the Sangha, the absence of Luang Fu Ka Sain became apparent. After asking around a bit, the people panicked and wandered from hut to hut, asking the whereabouts of Luang Fu. Later the disciples found a letter left behind by Abbot Luang Fu Ka Sain. The letter was two pages long, addressed to the villagers, and said, I have taught you all what to do already. Do not think to follow after me because I resign from being abbot now. It is comparable to many burdens which do not fit with my practice. I seek homelessness, and endless wandering and will not return here again. All that year, Luang Fu remained at the Sala Wangtan alone and did not return to the temple. Some villagers went to find Luang Fu Ka Sam's mother, who, when she heard of the news, traveled to the Sala Wangtan, where Luang Fu was staying, and begged him to return to the temple. But Luang Fu Ka Sam answered her, Mother, I don't wish this anymore. I do not fit in with staying in a temple. I like to wander in the desolate forests of Mayang. Ultimately, his mother had to give up trying to convince him otherwise, and Luang Po Ka Sam traveled to stay in a cemetery on the side of Mount Mayang. Luang Po Ka Sam practiced the Dhamma very diligently, was extremely pure and dedicated to his practice, and was not affected by worldly desires. Although he was thin and frail due to his renunciation and disinterest in food as a source of pleasure, his mind and heart were those of a great warrior, brave and diligent in not giving up the quest for renunciation and purity. Luang Fu Ka Sam remained practicing until the end of his days when he passed away in 1996 on Monday, 15th of January. His greatness is mourned and revered by the people of Lampong and all Thai people today. His amulets are becoming rarer, and are respected as one of the most sacred amulets consecrated in modern times. Luang Fu Ka Sam Kamako is an extremely revered monk of the Lana tradition, who is considered one of the greatest teachers of modern Thai history, and has a massive and devoted following in the north of Thailand and all over the country. His devotees believe that to pay reverence to him or wear his amulets results in receiving protection and safety wherever they go. His amazing dedication to his practice and purity is common knowledge among Thai people, which is easy to see since the very beginning of his path as he gave up the title of the abbot of the temple, and went to practice Vipassana Kamatana forest tradition methods residing in an old cemetery in the forest on a mountainside. Luang Fu Ka Sam passed his meditation and Dhamma practice alone in solitude, which is a cause of his being able to attain entrance to the points of Samadhi and subsequent Jhana access, controlling his bodily instincts and those of his psyche, psychological makeup and related aspects of his being. He attained an extremely high level of ability in psychic regions and could empower amulets with massive power. His amulets have been the source of many a tale of miracle events. They are extremely sought after and revered by Thai people of the central and the northern areas. This biography is for the record, so that future generations will know of this great master. Luang Fu would always receive any offerings in his alms bowl, and then return Meta's offerings to the people. Luang Fu Ka Sam was a good monk with a pure heart and moral precepts. He was full of Dhamma, living it as it arose, 
holding firm, and fading away in the sequence of the three marks of existence as the nature of all things, impermanence, suffering, and non-self. It is said that Luang Four has gotten rid of all his kalesas and is full of the Barami, the Ten Perfections, and is to this day the source of well-being and confidence of those who revere him, wear his amulets, follow his teachings, and be an example of a good practitioner of the Dhamma, and a good disciple of the Lord Buddha. Now let us chant the preliminary prayer. Before chanting to any Thai Buddhist statue or amulet. First, chant three times of this initial mantra. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddharsa. Namo tatsa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddharsa. Namo tatsa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddharsa. Namo tatsa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddharsa. The following spell is for daily praying to Luang for ka same statues or amulets. โอกาสะโอกาสะอาจาริโยเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอายสมาเขมโกภิกขุเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอาจาริยังวันทามิหังโอกาสะโอกาสะอาจาริโยเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอายสมาเขมโกภิกขุเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอาจาริยังวันทามิหังโอกาสะโอกาสะอาจาริโยเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอายสมาเขมโกภิกขุเมนาโถพันเตโหตุอาจาริยังวันทามิหัง The second kata is a short version to worship Luang for k a s a m สังฆรูปังวันทามิหังสังขังนะมามิสังฆรูปังวันทามิหังสังขังนะมามิสังฆรูปังวันทามิหังสังขังนะมามิ The statue of Luang Four Ka Sam Kamako standing at Trilak Cemetery in Lampong. Luang Four Ka Sam was one of the most respected monks in the kingdom. And stayed in this used to be remote cemetery. After he passed away, his sacred body was not decomposed and enshrined in the temple in a glass coffin at Trilak Cemetery in Lampong, where people could visit and pay respect. In the eyes of the people of Lampong, Luang Four Ka Sam is a great and selfless teacher who is not for fame and fortune and has infinite merit. He prayed for countless people and taught life philosophy during his lifetime. Luang Four Ka Sam's. Practice of avoiding danger and health preservation has brought good news to many wearers of his amulet.